Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're going to do a video today about Frito's cage. We've been getting a lot of requests for a video about that. So we're going to show you his cage and go over some tips on what we like and we don't like about his cage. And maybe it'll help you out a little bit. So to start off with, this is the cage that Frito came with. It's not my ideal cage, but it works for him for right now for what we need. It's about 20 inches deep by... 28 inches tall by 24 inches wide. It is an adequate size for Frito. Um, as far as cages go, the bigger the better. You can never have too big a cage for a bird. You can have too small. I would not go any smaller than this size of cage for a bird, especially if you're working, you're not home all the time. Uh, if you're home and the bird's out continuously, you could go a little bit smaller if you had to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Like I said, bigger the better. Um, we're working on going to make Frito a big custom cage here one of these days. Or get him a big wrought iron cage, one or the other. But that's in the works. So with this cage, I do move Frito around a lot. He goes from room to room with me all day long. Um, so he's on the move a lot. When I transport him from room to room, he does have to be in a cage or a crate because I have cats and dogs that like to eat Fritos. So he can't just go on my shoulder or he might get ate. So to get him around, I went to Walmart and I found this little kid's card table. I got really lucky at the time. It cost me $5 and I bought the wheels and we put the wheels on it to move him around. And so between the $5 for the table and the wheels, it was about $20 investment. So pretty cheap to get a cage on wheels. So 20 bucks. Uh, it just happens to fit the cage perfectly. So got a few inches on each side all the way around. So it's pretty, it's stable. So that's the, the good about that part. So if you have a cage that doesn't have wheels, uh, I suggest going to Walmart and check it out. Any little table, you can go to thrift shops and find uh, little tables with wheels sometimes. I just like this was the cheapest route for me at the time. So it worked out good. Now the spacing on this cage is half inch. Um, they say for the Quakers, no more than 5 8 inch bars. Uh, half inch I think is about perfect, which is what this one is. Now the thing that I do not like about this cage are the bars are so thin. And let me get you in closer on this so you can see. It's, they're, they're really thin bars. They're not like the wrought irons that are thicker. And I just think that's, you know, probably not so comfortable for the bird's feet. You see I'm sitting there, you know, it's probably hurts his feet. I know when I take the cage apart and I grab it, it kind of hurts my fingers. So I don't really care for that. So I want to get him a cage, if I do get him one, it's going to be wrought iron with thicker bars on it because I think that's just more comfortable for the bird. Now this cage also has a bottom grate inside, you can see that, so all the seed and poo uh, fall through there. Um, I've had birds in the past and I always took those out because uh, I don't think, like I said, it's, it's easy on their feet to be running around on that uh, those bars, but Frito is so messy that I had to put it back in because he just poops everywhere and it just made a big mess and I didn't want him walking around his poopies so we had to put that back in there um, so the next thing I want to talk about is perches very important perches are extremely important in your bird's cage you want to have as many different types of perches as you can um, don't go see these ones right here these are your standard bird cage perches these are those hard dowel ones um, not good for your bird's feet they cause arthritis um, I mean you can have some in there but that shouldn't be your sole source of perches. Now, that rope perch, that's Frito's favorite. He races up and down that. I call that his racetrack because he races up from the top to the bottom just constantly. So that's kind of his favorite. And the manzanita perches, I think, if you're going to go one type of perch, the manzanitas are the best. They're soft, softer wood. They're different size branches on them. Uh, just very good for their, their feet and for them and climbing and stuff like that. So... Um, I can't really fit too many more of those. I got another one over here, kind of a little wood perch. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are really good. So I would go with the Manzanita's first choice, the rope. Those are good, too. But like I said, it, like Frito's got a big variety of different types of woods and stuff in here for him to walk around on. So that's good for their little feetsies. And I'm going to show you some things in his cage. You probably noticed already off the bat, and, and I don't want any... Uh, hate letters from anybody on this because I do have some stuff in his cage that probably isn't the safest. I know that there's a lot of controversy about some of these things and I know the dangers of them um, but since I'm home with Frito all day uh, I don't worry about it so much. Now if you're at work I'm going to go over the, the stuff and uh, if you're at work all day and you're not home you probably won't, don't want some of the stuff in the cage but uh, anyway I'm going to go over his toys with you right now. So 
Frito loves toys. He goes through toys like crazy. You can see he's got some broken ones in there. He just tears them up and destroys them. Um, I'm constantly moving them out. But I'll tell you what his favorite thing is, is that when his broken toys, I take all the pieces and I just throw them in a toy box at the bottom of the cage. And I'm going to show you this right here. He's got a toy box in here. See, those are all his little pieces and broken toys. And he just loves that. And he spends a good majority of his time every day down there in his toy box playing with his toys and throwing them around. And I'm going to show you some things that I use for toys and he just loves them. Uh, and we change things out all the time. I'm always on the hunt for different things that he might like to play with. And, I'll, and what I do is I go through my kid's old toy box with the Happy Meal toys. And I grab stuff out of there um, that he likes and he plays with. And also uh, cat toys work out good too if they don't have anything that they're going to eat. You know, like these little bird balls. Actually, this was a bird toy that came apart. But you get these cat toys too. And I'll tell you, show you his favorite toy right now. This came out of a Happy Meal thing. I don't even know what this is, some Disney character. This is his favorite toy right now. He carries this everywhere. He puts it in his house. He throws it around. He just plays with this thing constantly now. So this is his favorite toy at the moment. Um, plastic spoons. Loves plastic spoons. He likes to carry these around too. So uh, cheap, doesn't cost you nothing toys. Uh, there's the plastic spoons. Um, these things. You can get these at the craft thing at Walmart. A big old bag of like 200 or something of these for a dollar or something. So, and they love things. And I've seen videos on YouTube where they actually, the Quakers build nests with these. Frito doesn't build anything with them. He just throws them all over the floor. But he likes to play with them. Cups. Plastic cup. He loves his cup. He carries this around. He gets inside of it. And he likes to get inside of it and sing because it echoes. So he gets in there and just talks up a storm inside his cup. So that's also a good fun thing. He had another thing in here, and I don't know what happened to it. He must have thrown it away. Oh, here it is. Part of his little egg, his Easter egg. Uh, he carries this around. He dunks it in his water. He just has a good old time with the little plastic Easter egg. So that's what I said. Just look around your house. Look for stuff. Um, uh, usually stuff for kids. It has non-toxic paint and stuff on it. So like little plastic toys. He likes to play with this little brush, and he pokes it around, throws it around. He just loves playing with all that. He, he plays with this toy box more than he plays with anything hanging in his cage. So, and then as far as the box goes, he loves his boxes too. He likes to get inside there and he hides and he plays hide and seek for me in his box. So, always have a box down there for him on top of his toy box. He just loves that. So, and he can climb on it too if he wants to get up there and sit on it. So, I highly recommend putting a box down there for your bird to play in. He chews on them. You know, I don't recommend right now, I ran out of boxes, so all I had was this white postal box. I recommend uh, just a plain cardboard box, because you, you don't want any color boxes like soda boxes or anything like that, because they're going to eat, they chew on it, and you don't want them eating the dye and all that stuff. And make sure that there's any tape on it, you take the tape off, because you don't want them eating the tape, too. So, anyway. So, yeah, boxes are good. They shred them up. Sometimes I shred up paper, or I, I have a paper shredder. So I take that shredded paper and I throw it in the bottom of his cage and he carries that around, puts it in the bars of his cage and has fun with that too. But it's kind of messy so I don't do that all the time. So that's always another, another thing you can put in there for them to play with. So as far as the toys go, we just kind of get all kinds of varieties of stuff. He loves bells and he carries, he's got some loose bells down in here from his broken toys. And he carries these bells all over the place and he shakes them. Here's another thing, I, a uh, paper clip. <laughs> He plays with that too. Bells. He just grabs them, his broken bells, and he carries them around and he shakes them everywhere and he has a good old time carrying those bells around. So loose bells are a good fun thing for them. Um, so his favorite toys as far as we try to go to the bird store, um, we got this one at PetSmart the other day. They don't have a very good selection of bird toys at all. If you go to an actual bird store that caters to birds, these kind of toys like this where they can shred them and take them apart. He loves these, and we had bought him one at the bird store, and he just tore it to pieces, but he got a lot of miles out of it, and it was like these little sticks and stuff, and he got to shred it. He just loved it, so we got to get back to the bird store. The bird store is kind of a, it's like an hour away, so we don't get over there very often, so I have to kind of make do with what I have or what's at PetSmart. I don't like ordering things online because I like to see what I'm getting as far as the toys go because they may look like they're non-toxic or something. You get them, and they're... You know, something you can't use. Uh, like I said, he loves anything with bells and balls. That's his favorite. He just loves, he beats the heck out of this toy. He really likes that one. Uh, these things, I think I liked them more than he did. He doesn't really play with these at all. But they look cute. So I leave them in here. Here's one of his broken ones that he 
tore apart. He had a swing in there. I took it out today. He tore that up. So the controversial thing here that people are going to give me hell about, and I don't want to hear it, is the Happy Hut. Now, I got Frito. First, I got him this other tent over here. Because Frito, when he's loose, he likes to run around under my blankets, and he likes to hide in things. So I wanted to get him something that he could hide in and things like that. So basically, that one over there, he plays hide and seek in it, and he uh, puts his toys in it. Other than that, he doesn't use it. The Happy Hut, he sleeps in this every night. Other than that, he doesn't use the Happy Hut. He doesn't mess with it during the day. Uh, like I said, if we're playing hide and seek and I'm chasing him around, he runs through there like a tunnel and he thinks that's great fun. And uh, he sleeps in it. So I'm not worried about it. I know that birds can chew these up and get tangled, uh, their feet tangled in the threads and stuff like that. Um, so people, they're not recommended at all, these Happy Huts. And people say they don't need them. Maybe they don't, but Frito likes to sleep in his every fring, every night. When the sun goes down, the lights go out, Frito goes in there and he sleeps. So, for now it's staying, and like I said, I'm home all the time, so I'm not worried about him getting caught up in it. He doesn't chew on it or anything like that, but just to let everybody know, happy huts are not recommended for birds, so use them with caution if you're going to. Now, this uh, white thing up here, when I got Frito when he was a baby, he was a lot smaller than he is now, and... I wanted a little house for him. And so that right there is a wipey box. And it had the lid on it and had the hole in it. And he used to love, he spent a lot of time in there and he liked to sing because it echoed. And he spent a lot of time in that box. Well, he got too big to really fit in there good. But he still, that's his favorite place to sit during the day. And he just sits up there. He loves sitting on that box. So that's why the box is still in there. He likes to sit on it. Again, cheap, free. You know, we have baby wipes, just clean it out really good with soap and water, and I zip tied it to the cage, and it's sturdy, and perfect. Perfect for the bird. Um, so that's his toys, and uh, as far as water goes, water, he's only got this one dish of water, but he's very messy, and I have to change his water out several times a day. Um, so that's why I don't put more water bowls. It'd just be more mess and stuff for me to clean up. But if you're not home all day, you probably want to have a more water dish than that because, yeah, he dirties that up and makes a mess out of it. Uh, he's got two different kinds of food that he has right now. He's got, uh, this is some kind of nut blend that I got. And then he also has, this one is just a mixture of seeds and fruit, uh, chow, whatever it is. It's just got a mixture of a little bit of everything in there. Uh, I don't have any particular bird food. I don't even know what brand this is. I kind of go and look at the ingredients and see what looks healthy for him. Um, he does get people food. He gets fresh fruits and vegetables, whatever we're eating for dinner. Yeah, I'm bad. I let him have a little piece of pizza and stuff and toast and things like that. So he eats a lot of different stuff, but they do need a good seed, good uh, mixed blend seed diet. Nuts good for them. Just a good variety of food. Like, those don't feed them like parakeet seed. They need more than that. When I got him, that's all the food he had. The guy gave me with him was a parakeet seed. And it's like, no, they need a good variety of all kinds of different fruit and nut blends and seeds. So, make sure that uh, you do that. You can go to any of your pet stores or your bird stores, and they can recommend a good, good diet for your bird. I'm with all my animals. I like to change it up a lot, so they're not eating the same thing day in and day out. So, I kind of... Just buy a different varieties of food and mix them up and, you know, so it never gets boring for them and it gets a, lot, a good thing. Now, another thing I just noticed in here, I just put this in here today that's uh, good for them. I started an experiment. I wanted to make in some trees in here and I talked to the bird place and they said use corn husks. And so I thought, okay, I'll get the corn husks and I'll dye them with uh, food coloring and make little trees in his house. Well, the food coloring wouldn't stick on the corn husks for some reason so I soaked them all night and it didn't take so but and again corn husks any grocery store two bucks for a big old bag and you can make your own little toys and stuff and they can shred those up they're non-toxic and you know have at it like this this toy right here that we bought at PetSmart it uh has corn husks in it so yeah corn husks are a good thing you can make your own toys um for the birds uh, one last thing I want to go over with this cage um when we got him the guy didn't realize that yeah birds open doors and they can escape so make sure we have we went and bought these little snaps hey 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 he's being he says don't mess with my stuff um so just the regular little snaps and so every one of his uh cage doors has a snap on it so he can't open them and get out when he's not supposed to and get ate by cats and dogs 
So that's very important. Make sure that all their their doors are secured, that they can't get them open. Um, a lot of your wrought iron cages and stuff, they come with their own locks anyway, but cages like this, they don't. So you need to put some kind of snaps or something secure on them. Yeah, he's pretty funny. He don't like me messing with his toys in his house. He, I told you before on other videos, he gets real cranky and tries to attack me when I mess with his stuff. Other than that, he's friendly and he don't bite, but... But when it comes to uh, his toys and his house, that's his domain and he don't want anybody touching it. So that's the overall of his cage. Like I said, uh, bigger the better. This isn't a perfect setup, but it's adequate for what we need right now. We're working on a bigger one. You cannot get, go with uh, too large a cage when it comes to birds. Also, if you're gonna house more than one bird together, make sure that they get along. A cage this size, you could house two Quakers in, but if they have bickering spats, there's not a lot of room for the bird to escape from the one that's picking on them. So before you put two birds together, just make sure that they get along before you leave them alone. Um, as far as housing different species together, I've had questions about that. Personally, I've never housed different species of birds together, but I know a lot of people that have, and they've had Quakers and lovebirds together, and Quakers and parakeets, and Quakers and conures, and you know, so I'm not, you, you can, but you just got to make sure that the birds get along before you leave them alone together. Um, don't just throw them in together and expect them to get along because a bird can get really terrorized by another bird. So they can't get really escape if they're in a cage. So, you know, watch them and introduce them to each other over a period of time before you would ever put them in together. Um, other than that, I hope this helps some people out. Um, <laughs> he's swinging away there on his door. Um, and we're going to make some more videos and to come and hope this helped everybody and have a good afternoon.